Hey guys, what's up? So I thought I'd show you, uh, I, I talked about in previous videos about this aqua coupler thing and this is actually a really cool device and if you're going to be hooking up a uh, either inductive or capacitive sensor, this definitely helps out a lot. Uh, this is a pretty cool little thing here. Uh, it's pretty cheap, wasn't expensive, it's $259 uh, on Amazon. It wasn't prime, so it took about two weeks to get here. But uh, yeah, this the cool thing about this thing is it creates like an isolated circuit between your sensor and your 5 volt because you know to get one of these sensors to re work reliably you need about 12 volts but your uh, your board most likely only require like most Marlin boards actually have a 5 volt uh, Z circuit so let me show you a picture real quick kind of how I'm going to be wiring this up but this is another website I'll put my link in where I got it but 3d printing stack exchange.com so this is actually having how wire I already have it so I'm going to wire this up just kind of like similar to this and I'll show you with my multimeter and my power supply to see if I can get it to work so yeah pretty cool little device you I mean pretty cheap so if you're gonna be doing this sort of sensor man this makes life easier much much easier than having to put in you know uh, diodes and different resistors this can do it all in this one little board for it was five dollars shipped so I'll put a link where you can get it but um, yeah pretty cool little thing here um, all right, we're back. I'm going to go back to the test bench, and we'll uh, get it wired up. Cool. All right, guys. So I'll try to explain how an octocoupler works. Zoom in real quick. This is actually what I got on... Uh, open this up real quick for you guys. And this is a uh, little part that I got on Amazon. So I'm going to try to explain what this little chip does on the board right there. So it's basically like a light-emitting diode. So on one side, you have you know you have this light emitting diode and then the other side you have like a collector that's actually collecting this stuff and that's what activates it so when you're triggering this device it's basically sending out a light a light emitting diode the emitter kind of even like it like an infrared remote right like on, on like a TV and on this side it's basically picking this thing up and activating the circuit so by doing this you actually have a completely isolated circuit here. Electrically, you're totally isolated from one side. So what we're doing is we're electrically isolating this inductive sensor here. So, uh, that's why this works good, so good, because we basically need to take a 12-volt a signal and send back 5, se five volts to, the, uh, to, the, to your printer board. So, like I said, you can see it a little bit better with this light, or maybe you can't see it all. But let me get this closer in the light. So what I have here is my I have two power supplies. I have this 12 volt power supply right there. Then I have a variable power supply here, which I'm going to turn down to five volts to emulate the actual Marlin board, printer board, five volts. So right now I currently have it powered on, just 12 volts, just the 12 volt side, just like the drawing. And I'm going to go through and check this out. So you see the activator right there, but you can also see the activator on the board. Hmm. All right. So now I gotta actually hook up the five volts and see what I'm getting on the output here. All right. So it's all hooked up. I have my uh, five volt right here, my variable power supply, connected to my negative lead on my multimeter. Positive side is going to is provide. Well, this this lead right here is coming from five volts from the, the power supply. That lead, that's the negative side. This is my positive terminal, obviously, in my multimeter here. And it's connected to the aqua coupler. 12 volts being powered to the uh, inductive sensor. So I just want to show you real quick what happens. So, all right, so I got this thing, I got the probe wired in there. So I'm, it's untriggered, 5 volts. And that's exactly what I want. So if I wanted to, I could change the voltage on my variable thing here and raise and lower that voltage, but the Marlin board wants 5 volts back. So this is totally untriggered. So let me go here and trigger this thing. Lights on. Oh, sorry, not there. So that's triggered. So that's almost like, it's, it's emulating the Z switch, which is just basically an on and off switch. So, there you go, check it out. That's, that's when it hits the bed level that's not activated. 
And this tells the, the Marlin board, okay, well, look, at I, I hit the bed. So, and that's it. So I'm just emulating the 5 volts, but normally I have the 5 volts coming from the, the Marlin board into the actual octocoupler here, but yeah, you guys, I guess you could always still rewire it in a, like a manual Z switch, but um, I don't think, I, for me, I don't, I don't do that, but pretty cool, look at that. So this one little device makes life so much easier. Trying to, because these, these sensors will not operate at 5 volts. If this sensor could operate at 5 volts, then this wouldn't be a problem. So even like that, that's an inductive sensor and this is a capacitive sensor, but um, yeah, it, this just makes life so much easier because these things operate so much better at a higher voltage. So that is pretty awesome. Zero volts, five volts. How cool is that? All right, so that's how it works, guys. Hopefully this helps somebody. Awesome.